So now I would like to share with you a reflection about this uh, fantastic year that we have had. I think I will remember this year for the rest of my life. It has been one of the most uh, exciting experiences in my life. As you have heard me uh, in other speeches, I like to connect a lot the relation between law, life, and engineering. This is my last speech. I will do it again. <laughs> As you know, two of the things that makes us human beings are that we can love and we can create. And engineering is connected to one of those. Engineering is related to creating. We engineers are connected to one of the things that makes us human beings, we create. As I think I told you in my speech last year, I think that engineering is one of the things that helps us to transform our world. I love engineering with passion, and I think all the members of ASME love engineering with the same passion, even more. And one of the key missions that we have is to inspire students and young engineers to feel the way we do about life and our profession. And we'll say it one more time. I like how it sounds. <laughs> one of our missions is to inspire students and young engineers to feel the way we do about life and our profession. I was a few months ago in Florida in one of the many meetings I have had the honor to attend as president, and I noticed it was a Saturday morning or a Sunday morning, and I saw about a hundred volunteers besides all the staff that, that do a fantastic uh, job helping us to fulfill our uh, desire to help the society. And I was wondering, why in earth are these guys, 100 people, on a Sunday morning in this room in Florida when they could be with their families? There has to be something in common among all of them. And I realized that actually one of the things that make us to be members of ASME is that we like to serve. We do this for free. Sunday morning, we were not with a wife, with the children, having a nice breakfast. We were volunteering to try to help the organization. So, I will also share with you what, after I gave a speech in another event, somebody came and he asked me, Julio, everything you're saying is very nice, but how do we go about actually making it work? How do we inspire it? It's a very typical question of an engineer, no? How do we go into action? So, this year, uh, we have done, I think, a very good number of very good things. And I have had the honor to be a member of a fantastic team, the members of the board and all the staff that, under the leadership of Tom Laughlin, have been helping us. We have achieved things that I consider to be intergalactic. <laughs> what is one of them is that we have been able, after about 18 months of very hard work, to implement the strategy for our organization. If you remember last year, in my inaugural speech, I was talking about, I presented two pictures. There was a little mountain on the left of the screen and a much larger one on the far right. And we were saying we have to transform our organization. We have existed for about 135 years. We have grown a lot. We have about 130,000 engineers in about 150 countries. But in order to be relevant in the 21st century, we have to become a real global organization. Please listen to my word with my strong accent, a real global organization. 
And in order to do that, we have to embrace the whole planet. The whole planet is now a small village. So what have we done in order to complement the effort of the strategy? We took three delegations of the Board of Governors, and we visited three, three places in the world. One delegation went to Peru, that's where this beautiful accent come from, <laughs> and we interacted with people from Chile and Colombia. We also went to India, we went to Mumbai, Bangalore, and Delhi, and we also went to Beijing. Before going, we had a lot of preparation, and one of the decisions we made before going to these trips was that we were not going into these trips to ask questions for which we already had answers. And we did a very detailed homework. So when we went, we visited, we interacted with people from five communities. That was a constant in all these trips. We met with people from academia, the leaders of ASME in each one of the regions, leaders from industry, uh, the leaders of the professional organizations in each of these countries that were not ASME, and also other kind of uh, leaders. For example, in Peru, we met with the ambassador of the United States in Peru. In China, we met with a national <coughs> so, a nuclear society, the manufacturing society, and so on. And we learned a lot. And all of that is gonna be embedded in the strategy. Now let's, work, uh, let's talk for a few minutes about the strategy. I think a few of you heard yesterday, before yesterday, about two very difficult numbers that you may want to memorize. One of them, number two, and the other number is at 25. So we plan to be twice as big by the year 2025. The Board of Governors made that decision, a crucial decision in September of the last year. It was not easy, but it's a bold decision. That's what is gonna help us to generate all the tools and resources we need in order to inspire more students and young engineers around the world. It's a very important tool. We also decided that by 2025, at least 50% of our revenue will come from sources other than costs and standards. It is still means that costs and standards have to keep growing. Now, how are we gonna get 50% of our resources outside cost and standard, which right now is 80%. The challenge is that we have to unleash the creative power of our organization. That is what we have to do in order to reach 2025 with the goals that we have to aspire. And I am pretty sure that we will do it. There are many other achievements that we accomplished during this year but I have only seven minutes, which I think I have already completed, so I will leave it there. <laughs> now, it's very important to emphasize that nothing we have achieved this year has to do with who is the president. It has to do with who we are as an organization. Now, we will pass the baton to the next president. And we are very focused on continuity. Unfortunately, we won't be able to continue with this accent. We will change the accent. <laughs> but we are doing a very good work on the last name. Do you know how you spell my last name, Guerrero? G-U-E-R-R-E-R-O. -R -R -E so the last two letters are R-O. And the next president is R-O-E. So we couldn't work on the accent. But the next president, there is a continuity on that space. <laughs> and Keith knows that we will give him all the support that he needs. He is a dreamer, like all the presidents before him. And we know, he knows, that we will help him to achieve the best he can during uh, his tenure. So, I will conclude my uh, speech by reminding you, what did I tell you at the beginning? What is our mission as leaders of ASME? Our mission <coughs> is to inspire students and young engineers 
to feel the passion that we feel for our profession. That's extremely important, and everything we are doing is in order to provide us with the tools we need to achieve that important role. Thank you very much. It has been a great honor, an intergalactic honor for me <laughs> to be able to serve during this year. Thank you.